Hello! Did you know that many diseases may look like alopecia areata? Please take a look at these images and try to analyze which of these patients have alopecia areata. One, yes, this is alopecia areata. The trichoscopy image is very typical for alopecia areata with multiple exclamation mark hairs. They are also in manifestation of active phase of the disease, but there are also some black dots which manifest a residue of a hair shaft in the hair follicle and some yellow dots which are a manifestation of empty hair follicles filled with sebum and sometimes keratotic material. This is image number two. And here we see a typical case of tinea capitis with multiple comma hairs being a hallmark of tinea capitis in trichoscopy. There's a whole field of view full of comma hairs. Few of them are marked with the blue arrows. There are also some other typical trichoscopy features of tinea capitis, such as the presence of the corkscrew hairs. Sometimes we may see some Morse code hairs and zigzag hairs, which are typical for tinea capitis. However, they're not specific for tinea capitis. We may see them also sometimes in some other diseases. So in this image, you see the four most typical trichoscopy features of tinea capitis, the comma hairs, the corkscrew hairs, the Morse code hairs. They're also sometimes called the interrupted hairs and the zigzag hairs. Image number three is showing syphilitic alopecia. We will see some black dots, some yellow dots, but also some tapered hairs. Well, this image is very similar to alopecia areata in trichoscopy. There is a recent article about trichoscopy of syphilitic alopecia. The authors found that alopecia areata and syphilitic alopecia share very similar trichoscopy features. There is, however, one difference. The difference is that we will never see an exclamation mark or exclamation marks in patients with syphilitic alopecia, even though some tapered hairs may be present. Image number four. In this image, uh, we see the hair loss due to aplasia cutis congenita. And uh, here we will see the typical trichoscopy image of hair bulbs, which are arranged radially along the hair bearing margin. In the mid part, we will see a hairless area. This is a disease which is usually diagnosed in very young children. A recent article summarized the most typical features of aplasia cutis congenita, including translucent epidermis, and through the translucent epidermis, we are able to see the hair bulbs, which are arranged radially along the hair bearing margin, and there is a hairless area in the mid part. Image number five is showing hair loss due to skull metastasis of scolded tumors. In this case, this is a metastasis of breast cancer. In trichoscopy, if we are not very detailed in analyzing the image, we may also think that this is similar to alopecia areata. We will see some black dots, some yellow dots, but please take a look in detail. In the mid part of the image, we will see some polymorphous blood vessels, and this should be not the case in patients with alopecia areata. The analysis of skull metastasis that have been described in literature indicates that the most typical features in trichoscopy include the polymorphic blood vessels, the presence of some yellow dots, usually at the periphery, and also some black dots may be visible, and sometimes we will find some ulceration. So, skull metastasis may show features both clinically and in trichoscopy that may have specifics typical for cicatricial alopecia and for non-cicatricial alopecia in the same patient and sometimes even in the same field of view. Image number six. This is an image of pseudopilat. Pseudopilat was first described by Brock. This is a French name and pilat in French means alopecia areata, so it would be, when translating directly to English, it would be pseudo-alopecia areata. This is because Brock has seen a disease 
that looks like alopecia reata, but it is not alopecia reata, and this is why he gave it this name. Pseudopelad is a form of cicatricial alopecia in the spectrum of lichen plano pilaris. Pseudopelad usually starts with very small areas of alopecia. Over the time, these small areas of alopecia become bigger and then they become confluent to form even bigger hairless areas. In trichoscopy, there is really nothing specific. Sometimes we may see some very discrete features which are similar to typical classical lacrimal pilaris. So I have shown six images of hair loss that may look like alopecia reata, then included alopecia reata itself with the typical exclamation mark hairs, black dots and yellow dots, tinea capitis with the typical comma hairs, corkscrew hairs, zigzag hairs and the Morse code or interrupted hairs, syphilitic alopecia which may be very similar to alopecia reata but, but there are no exclamation mark hairs. Aplasia cutis congenita but with typical translucent epidermis and the visible hair bulbs which are arranged in a radial form. Scalp metastasis, which share the features of cicatricial and non-cicatricial alopecia in trichoscopy, and the most typical finding will be the presence of polymorphic vessels with the presence of black and yellow dots. And pseudopelad, which is a diagnosis of exclusion. However, sometimes it may show some features of lichen plana pilaris in trichoscopy. This was only a selection of diseases that may mimic alopecia reata. There are several other diseases that may cause focal alopecia and that may mimic alopecia reata. Thanks a lot. If you found this video useful, please consider giving me a like.